Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, season reset means we are on plat floor four. Um, jank time, doesn't matter if you lose, you can't go any further down. Uh, so it's a great time to test out some new decks and ideas. I should have finished top 1200, I was 11.29 with under a minute left. So hoping to make the top 1200 last month. Um, Phyrexian Obliterator is my favorite card in Historic right now, and it's carried me uh, this entire season uh, that just passed. Um, so we just finished wrapping up blue-black combo mill. Uh, we are now playing a blue-white blink deck, kind of tempo style. Um, so what we're trying to do is basically blink a bunch of stuff. Uh, you obviously have Thassa that's been played in a few different uh, blink shells. Charming Prince, Fibble Thip to draw cards. Prince can also buy on stuff. You have the Prince and Yorian combo where you can blink Yorian each turn, then blink Prince, and then kind of cycle through your abilities. Um, new cards in the set, uh, Baron, Talarian, Archmage. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you can return up to one target uh, creature or Planeswalker to its owner's hand. You can also target your own. If you do return a card to your hand, you get to draw a card. So you can reset any of your enter the battlefield effects, get an extra draw off Fibble Thip. Uh, with your Brazen Borers, you can cast your Brazen Borer, then get it back to hand and then bounce something. You can keep resetting their stuff. You can reset your Teferis. Uh, so a lot of interaction there. Um, Guard Mage, another good threat to blink. You have some ECDs, um, some Teferis to kind of filter your draws, some disputes. Um, I was thinking Gyruda, but the more I think of it, I'm probably not going to play Gyruda. Uh, probably just play the, the fourth dispute. It works out pretty well from a tempo play. Um, probably makes the most sense. Yeah. There's not enough to hit off Gyruda in the deck. Um, mana base wise, we got one castle and then, um, just some basics and stuff. Uh, sideboard wise, Soul Guide Lantern for Graveyard, Devout Decree, Red and Black matchups, Glass Caskets, Aggro, some Aether Gust, Vetoes, Gideon vs. Control, and then Time Wipe. Although we're a creature deck, we can kind of shift to more of a controly deck. It's also good to bounce our own threats, so we always keep something around afterwards. So we finished Blue Black 2-2. Uh, two and two. So we are Plat 4 with one win. We will fire this up, see how it goes. Uh, if you do have any cool, exciting decks you've been running with uh, off the beating course, do flip them my way. Uh, I'm trying to test out as many M21 decks as possible right now before kind of queuing it up. I'll probably do some historic content as well if people are interested. Let me know in the comments. Uh, Jumpstart's not out yet. We'll do a bunch more when Jumpstart comes out. Um, Forewarning, there will be Thrag Test decks. Lots and lots of Thrag Test decks. As my username, I can't really see what the stream Bant Wolf Run would suggest. It is my card to play. So, we are going to annoy our opponent by just continually bouncing their stuff. So, bounce the Steamkin. And that's pretty much what the deck wants to do. So they're going to play something out now. I am going to Charming Prince with the Baron and then bounce that. If they just kill the Baron, then it's fine. I guess I should have attacked first. Trade their Steamkin. I'll take a draw here. Oh, that is at the end of turn, so it doesn't trigger. Yeah, gates are a little iffy. So we have a choice here. I could Charming Prince gain three life. I can Yorian. Kind of misplayed there. I'm gonna keep the Yorian for now. Probably keep the ECD. We have two Yorians in hand. So let's just gain three life here. 
This probably is like Bone Crusher. So if they just play out like Bone Crusher this turn, I'm gonna Elspeth Conquer's death it. Yeah, I messed up that turn. Beginning of your end step, so when I returned it to the hand, it was already at my end step, so I didn't get the at the beginning effect. Kinda wanna try to build a deck of around Vatarok, the three mana five four dragon that needs treasures. Pretty much a free attack. Now we have the loop, even if they play Annex. Yeah, it turns out just the Rakdos cards that are already there are OP. Drawing a second Charming Prince is good, because it means we get to keep the loop going. Steamkin. Just do this. So this comes back at our end step. We exile Annex. It's a fairy is a great card, so let's attack in. We'll bounce the Steamkin. They can kill Teferi. Don't particularly care. Um so I'm actually going to do, no, because then this comes back. Yeah, basically it'll come back at their, this comes back on my turn. Yeah, it's fine. Devout Decrees, Glass Caskets, Aether Gusts, Time Wipes. Take out the Brazen Borrowers. Trimothassa, Cut the Disputes. probably run it like that just kind of play like a hybrid control deck so this deck's really just about annoying your opponent just keep bouncing their stuff exiling it kind of getting the loop going it's a little bit more proactive the one thing like our board wipe comes down turn five versus turn four which could be an issue if we keep this Gonna use Charming Prince. I think how our hand's shaping up, we just fetch now. Probably, like we have double blue for four mana to fairy. Interesting question here. Do we Charming Prince have a blocker? Or do we Aether Gust? I think we do Aether Gust this turn. Because this is like the Annex turn, so if we could tempo them out that way. Okay. Let's get them to overcommit here. light up the stage that's coming out from them. I hit the shock as well. So I 
think based on like how our hand's shaping up, I'm just gonna gain three life here. The shock's gonna come down, but then I get to elite guard mage and then Thassa elite guard mage. So getting that going every turn will be good. Like they're hitting us for three. Robber's annoying. So we could see Cleave next turn. Taf's a nice draw. So really just want to try to dodge the Cleave this turn. I think what we do is put the block here. Because if they have Ember Cleave at least I trade with it, then I can bounce the cleave. Annex. Can go to 10. I think I actually just like doing this. Templing them for a turn. No, I am not making this up as I go. And then just kind of go from there. Because here they need to decide if they... We know that they have the Annex now. So I can block here. They can't instant speed. And if they activate Castle Embreath, then they can't play out the Annex. So I can bounce the Scorch Spitter to their hand. Yeah, that keeps my um, my Teferi alive. Because now I can block here. They can use Castle Embreath. But I just want to use this as something to protect. And I am taxing them on their mana. So they can play Scorch Spitter out here, but I perfectly go Annex. So now they still can't kill Teferi this turn without another haste threat. Trust me, I, have a plan. I guess they can double Castle Embreath on Teferi. But if they're paying 6 mana to kill Teferi then I'm happy. Sure. That sounds like a trade. So we got the temple. I actually don't mind the land here. Because then next turn I can Thassa and Baron and then blink their things every turn. Can keep this alive. I think we get to fairy. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Bounce that. Bounce that. We should get the have this now. Every turn I can cast the uh, Murian by bouncing with the fairy. And I'm gaining three life and drawing a card every turn. Today is the day of annoying our opponents to conceding. 
Sweet. Good showing so far. Whenever you can make your mono red player pay seven mana, or was that eight mana to deal three damage, you take those moments. Let's try it. We're on the play. That. So I'm going to do this just because if this is flash, um, there's that new counter spell that if they have a flyer, it deal, it, you have to pay four. Um, this matchup's going to be very difficult. Flash decks do very well against the deck that's trying to play four mana spells. So what we just need to do is run things out. And part of the reason, oh, it's actually good. Brazen. Take the damage here. Probably trade with the Brazen here. Maybe we should have held that uh, dispute. Resolving is pretty good. So they have Night Pack. So next turn, we're going to try to sneak this Yorian in. Hope they don't have anything. They do get attacks here. It's pretty good. See what we can do here. Yeah. Rewind in this Dex Gross because you could basically counter their spell on turn three. So let's bring in the Gusts. Let's bring in. Do we want Glass Casket? So probably the Vetoes. Trim a Yorian, trim these to fairies, trim a Thassa, trim two Thassas. Do I want Glass Casket? Probably not. Probably want the Time Wipes. This allows us to tempo them. that it's not the best hand but I, I don't think this is a matchup we're really in any way favored You don't see much flash on the ladder, and this is probably something we should revisit again just to see how it goes with Rewind being in the format. 
So I kept the gust on top. It's an answer to wolf. Would like to see like a mystical dispute. I'm gonna throw down Brazen Borrower this turn to get a clock going. Because if they counter it, then I get to play Elite Guard Mage. Guard Mage at least cycles itself. So I got Time Wipe. I can do this now because I don't want to get rewinded later. Cool. Another borrower is really good here. So I'm going to do this to throw down Brazen Borrower. And that puts um pretty close to dead. So Teamer's not really a deck that, or um, Simic Flash, like once you resolve your threats, especially Flyers. See if they just draw a card here. Play out the guard mage. If they try to wolf, it's fine. can go back on top. We have both this Conquer's Death and Time Wipe also. So even if they wolf here, If they're just Vantra seeing, then this game's pretty much over. Could have been a Brazen Borrower they drew there. Bounces our Guard Mage, and then comes down and blocks our Brazen Borrower. So I'm going to do that now, because then I have Teferi that I can drop afterwards. So Brazen Borrower is their only out. Just Shark Typhoon for one. That was weird. Um, so they have Sailors as well. I think maybe on the play... Like, this at least presents a clock. These block in the air, but maybe trim let's trim the Yorians. This top end's not gonna do much for us. And bring in a casket. Probably just go from there. Like if we're in the position to drop Yorian, then it's great for us, but I don't see us really getting much value out of that. Okay, that sounds good. So I got some bait spells. Usually in this matchup, always lead with dispute with uh, blue mana open, even if you don't have the dispute. It's a good way to fake. Do this now. 
I'm gonna keep him off the mana. That stops the turn three wolf. As much as I'd like to see double to fairy, we do need another land. Really frustrating. Very frustrating. So I'm doing this because if they tried to like ambush a wolf, could have gusted it. I kind of want like a dispute or something to go along with this Teferi. <sighs> Vito's good. But I think we want lions. Turns probably Brazen Borrower coming down. Let's see if they have the dispute here. down let's slow this down I'm gonna plus Tef here that's more like it in case they have like a shark and then I think what we do is guard mage so that way if they have a flyer I can block it that. so since they did that I'm more inclined of just bouncing it we'll play the tempo game oh i've done the hero thing before. sick taking down that matchup's huge that one is uh is probably the tough one Alright, let's run one more with this one, see how it goes. Flash decks are... they're interesting, it's just... at least they're proactive a lot of times. It's not like you're playing blue-white control, where they're just countering everything. How's the triple Baron hand? We go first... I mean, it does piss off the opponent. Like, if it's a creature deck, even if it's a Planeswalker deck, we're bouncing their Planeswalkers. That's a good draw. This is Bant, maybe. Full House. Sultai. Hmm. They have questing beast, they have questing beast. Let's take our draw. If they sharknado, they take down this first tough. It's not the end of the world. 
Ugin deck. Okay, so they're probably going up to Ugin. So I do think we want to... I think I just want lands. This might be a bad idea. So this turn that goes to six, next turn they can go to seven. So I can probably get away with Yorian this turn if we draw a land. That's gonna be a no, sir. Fibs went away scared. Don't worry, I got this. Mm. Let's get proactive. They have another casualties we're in trouble but we're in trouble if they have another casualties anyways we really want to be playing creature decks not like big mana decks like these don't have much text and having three of that this is hardly my worst defeat the old draw into double casualties They have Ugin, then we probably scoop. Okay. And then my stream wouldn't load, and Arena wouldn't load. Um, so we are back in this one. Uh, they escaped Uro. I think what we do... They're just playing these as blockers. Keep this one, bounce the grazer, play to fairy. I don't want to commit more to the board in case they have like an extinction event. they go grazer again then I can just play the guard mage hopefully draw land it's weird so I was trying to get back into arena and it uh, kept saying failure to connect then my stream labs wouldn't uh, actually connect and now we're dead Once Ugin comes out, it's pretty much game over. I can't deal five damage to it. They're gonna just keep pinging at me and then they have those two grazers. So this is a veto matchup. Aether Gust, Glass Casket. Um, probably wanna take care of their graveyard. These barons were pretty bad. Thass is okay. Trim one. Yorian could be interesting, but I think we do trim one. Fibble Thip replaces itself. They'll probably bring in counters. Probably just these Charming Princes come out. They don't attack through Grazer anyways. Do it like that. I like Brazen Borrower better because it's a flash threat and it can attack through Grazer, which they showed. It's a slower hand. 
I don't think this matchup's great. We're a tempo deck. They don't really have stuff to tempo, and we're not as fast as the flash decks. I, I will counter a dispute to keep them off. Yeah. They have the early grazer, though. This deck can very easily turn for Ugin against us. So it's not the... Okay, so I actually don't mind that. That lets me keep up this dispute. I'm gonna keep him off mana here. So here I can Teferi, start this going. I think we hold up Dispute next turn. Here they spiral. Second ECD is good. So we'll just hold up ECD or hold up disputes if they have like Nisa or something. I'd love a threat right now. Fibbles isn't quite a threat. Teferi's good. I'm gonna play this first since we get a card draw. Okay, so we hit the dispute. We hit Yorian. I don't think Yorian is really where we wanna be right now. because this is a casualties turn. I want to try to ultimate this. Another threat. I think we just play this out. Oh, Aether Gust, why couldn't you be? So we're we need to dodge casualties one turn. We're in an okay spot if we dodge the casualties for a turn. They can't Ugin this turn. Crisis is fine. Actually, let me see if I hit a dispute. I would love to take two turns after this. Sweet. So there, Teferi bounces, and then we can go from there. Um, I brought in the glass caskets. I think we're okay. Do I want Yorians, or do I just want the time wipes? You know what? Let's cut Yorian. Let's bring in Charming Prince. Like that game, we wanted an earlier threat, especially on the play. I don't think this is a Gideon matchup. You usually want it against like sweeper control, not uh, casualties. So that game really came down to us countering their early ramp 
and then just not being able to get ahead. Um, I actually think it's, let's get rid of glass casket. Just keep the lines. I think that's fine. I think if they Uro here, I dispute the Uro. And then I Soul Guide Lantern. Okay, no play there is good. This just lets my next couple land drops work a lot better. If that's their turn three play, we're happy. I think I want to keep them off lines. Then this lets me target their Uro. And then I have both Aether Gust and Vito here. Just tempo them. If they want to mystical dispute this, then it's fine. Okay, so dispute here. So three cards in their graveyard. As I draw a top line. Okay, Brazen Borer is not bad because depending on what they play out, I can veto. Not like we jam Brazen here. Might beta counter. Perfect. So same play. We have a counter spell if they try to drop Ugin. So they have five cards. So we exile when they put the, as they're putting the next card into the graveyard. So we exile now to get rid of the arrow because they could exile their graveyard. Crisis. So bounce this. Need to find something for that. The best is if they just try to oog in here. The fairy's good because I could phase it out and attack in. Should have this one now. Let's 
So we're dead if they have another Ugin. If nothing else, I will protect the If we dodge Ugin, then we're fine. Nope. Vito. No way we play around that either. And now they just refill their hand with Gracious. Super annoying. This shoots this. I need to find Conquer's death. We are close on that one. This point, I don't even think Conqueror's Death does it. We missed too many turns. Because now they have Misa coming down, they untap lands, they make a big crisis, and I didn't bring in the board wipes. That's disappointing. We played around the first Ugin. It's two in one with the deck. Plat tier three. We'll run one more. I think increasingly I want another Conqueror's Death. Hey Truex, thanks for stopping by. How's it going? Maybe cut a Thassa. Bring another ECD. Like both those games we lost against Sultai, if we had an ECD to follow it up, we would have been okay. Doing well. It's uh, Canada Day tomorrow, so uh, my work let me out half day, five hour. Usually it's five hour Fridays for long weekends, but it was five hour Tuesday. So uh, no complaints. Sand doesn't really do much. Sand's better. In the dark. Dispute goes away. Mana base is awful. Okay, that makes the mana base a lot better. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, a little weird having like midweek. It's just like a Wednesday off, and then I gotta continue my week Thursday. And then everyone, half my team's in the States. So they're still doing work, so I'll come into like a bunch of emails and stuff. Was hoping for untap there. Not sure if we're against Flash or Bant yet. Uro. How was everything with you, Truex? What have you uh, been up to uh, instead of Magic? Yeah, you get used to it a lot of times. Um, so I can Guard Mage here, or I can Thassa and then get a card draw. I, I don't know. This is probably a ramp deck, so I, I want to put pressure on the board. Okay, just Druid. Yeah. Flash doesn't play Blast Zone. 
they're just all about that Uro life. So this is another matchup where Ugin comes down and we get absolutely destroyed. How did we not draw a land? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because Ugin could come down this turn, I'm just going to play this out. I'll flash in the Brazen Borrower on end step. I don't understand how we're not drawing lands, but... Shark here. I was really hoping for a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then missing lands has helped us. Okay, so Ugin's likely coming down next turn. So let's get our value now, probably. Razor. It's actually humorous, just not drawing lines. I need to do this because I can't beat Ugin once it's down. My cards are too slow. So I need to have three power to come back with. They just play Uro. Um, I wouldn't say like just taking over. Uh, like the Bant Ramp deck does play two. Uh, still just like a powerful kind of effect. It's just that my particular build right now doesn't apply enough pressure. We don't have haste or anything. So when Ugin sweeps, like they have to be playing Ugin. It's the payoff. Not using our mana here feels bad. Well, shield's down time. This isn't a fight you can win. They have Ugin, they have Ugin. No, I am not making this up as I go. Are you kidding me? Nineteen lions still in the deck. They just yep. So we tried to wait and they sweep here, so the problem is, even at this point, our draw into Conqueror's Death doesn't really help. Because we don't have a land. They don't have enough for Uro. And like a lot of our deck, we're tempo. That's actually hilarious. Just not drawing any lands. Then it comes to play tap, so I can't even play it to the pressure. Let's maximize our likelihood of drawing here. Okay, so we got the Conqueror's Death. Step one is achieved. And then I have Yorian to Conqueror's Death afterwards on the Ugin. Alright, so I can get rid of this, and then I can get rid of Nisa. Might be hope. Oh, look at all these lands. They have counter spells. They may have second Ugin. 
It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Then this is my fate. Bottom bottom is the way we want to see it go. This probably plays three to four Ugins, so it's still a decent number. So really looking for another Conqueror's Death. Like if they have Hydrate Crisis, they can draw a bunch of cards, but I can just keep blinking it to their hand. Smart play by the opponent there. But I have Thassa. We are just getting beaten down by lands. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I can go Archmage. So I can do this, bounce a land to their hand. And then Charming Prince gives me a blocker as well. So they'll be able to make one more elemental. I do need to do chump blocks. I'm not blinking anything else. Because this only comes back at the end of their next turn. If we draw a land then I can also to fairy bounce my ECD hit something else they have brazen borrower I'm dead anything that interacts with these creatures I'm dead Interesting they're doing the blast zone. Would probably prioritize that. It's a way to sweep the board. We're also at any point dead to just Ugin off the top plus to deal three damage to us. I'm gonna have to start using Thassa to gain life. Okay, they arrow back. Opponents used five more minutes of clock than us. No attacks is great for us.
Okay. Opponent is staying alive. So here I can Tef Uro, but then they make another one. I can Thassa Tef, which is probably the line. I'm gonna have to let this go. I can Tef Yorian. Teth, get Yorin back to hand. Cast it, blink this, exile Uro. That means I have four blockers back, three blockers back, but they have four attackers, so that's too much. So I think I just need to do this. Just keep taxing him with this Uro. That's interesting. So I can blink Yorian. So with them putting that on three, it can blow up this and this. Can also just bounce that back to their hand. I could flash and borrower so I can do this I blast the blast zone back to their hand and now they Nisa Nisa's in hand. Or one, I don't know. There's still that visual bug that they have. Yeah, I'm gonna um, gain life after. So my plan is I'm gonna block with the Charming Prince because then I get it back with Elspeth Conquer's death so I can gain some life. And then I can play Thassa. So them not attacking is kind of annoying. Dispute's really not going to do much at this juncture of the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seed. Too much power. They can't handle the blink factory. Three and one with the deck. Happy with how this one turned out. This one's been good. Mill's been like a mill was a meme. It was fun when it went off, but this one's got some uh, some legs to it. I think just the disruption that it offered was pretty good. Like you have the loops, 
Um, strong cards individually plus the sideboard helps a lot. I actually think we don't want Gideon and probably just based we probably want a fourth veto just play it like that I think we just do this this is where we stand sweet I'm glad we've had Ugin decks anyways I'm gonna wrap this one up we've been going for about two and a half hours now I appreciate everyone stopping by had some really good viewed counts today um, I'll be up tomorrow probably for a little bit uh, if you do have any cool decks do send them my way but we'll continue trying to rank up uh, try to get to mythic as early as possible i might do some historic this is one of the decks i've been working on this is what got me top 1200 last month um, this and the rakdos obliterator deck um, i think these decks are really fun to play um, so this is kind of just a grindy mid-range deck that your opponents attack into obliterator and then realize what it does i appreciate everyone stopping by stay safe